Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Jason Breuder. Uh, I'm software developer at DAF, working with Greg McLean. Um, today I was asked to give a presentation on working with factorials in AppSim. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is go through a few slides. Uh, I wasn't brave enough to use the live demo. I thought Dean was pretty brave to do that. I'm not quite that brave. Uh, so I've just uh, got some slides we're going to go through. We're just going to go through why we use factorials. I go through the basics of factorial configuration, just how to get into it, how to set it up. We go a bit more specifics into how they use the MET components and the soil components and the manager components, which are three of the main things that you want to use within the factorials. And then just briefly at the end, touch on some of the more advanced stuff that you can do. Everybody's pretty familiar with the uh, standard AppSim run, uh, continuous sorghum run. Not much to it, nice and simple. What, you, what, what we get into in a situation, we've just done a single crop for an online tool, which just uh, multiplies different manager choices. So in that we modelled 47 different sites, four soil configurations, three starting waters, three cultivars, four sowing densities, five sowing dates, three starting nitrogens, and three row spacings. And so that gave us a total of 304,000 different app simulations to run. You can just see from the tree there, there's just no way you could put that into the interface and run that. With the factorials, we can set up that same number of, of simulations with a factorial configuration consisting of three nodes. How do we get into factorials? There's a factorial button right up on the toolbar. To add a, fa a factor node, there's very simply just right click on the factorial tree that comes up. Uh, it's a pretty simple interface for that one. It's not, it hasn't had as anywhere near as much development as the, app sim the simulations tree. And then we can just drag items across from the simulation tree and add it onto the factor node. And I'll just go through some more of the, some more instances of this now. Or I'll just do this slide. The factorial tree you can see in the middle there. So we added that MET component that's highlighted. I'll just have a, I'll, uh, do it there so it appears online as well. Uh, so we just drag that MET across onto that factor node. The targets form on the right hand side is very important. The targets thing tells it which uh, simulation component that we're trying to work with. Once you've got the factorial set up, you click on that factorials node at the top and you'll just notice there that it gives us the result. That's the, the simulations that it's created for us. It hasn't run them at that stage, it's just created them behind the scenes. I'm going to jump to using, give you a few examples of how to use those factor nodes. The first one is the MET component. There's actually three different ways we can use that. The first way is what I just said then was we drag the MET node and we drop it onto one of those factor nodes. And if you wanted to represent multiple uh, locations, so multiple MET files, you just keep dragging them onto that node and it'll set up a multiple, uh, multiple number of them. A more efficient way is to add a silo input component on there. And you can see there that there's a list of station numbers. So if you know the station numbers, you can put them in that list there. Uh, it's much easier to add that in and much quicker to use in the user interface. Similarly, you can also do that with a list of file names. So if you've got all your MET files in a, in a directory, you can list the file names down there. Uh, it can take quite a few in that list, but I did notice that uh, it, gets, it blows out pretty quick. <laughs> soil components. Soil components are really simple. It just does a replacement. So on the tree there, you see this, the soil node in the middle. It's got four soils there, just as an example. When it, when it creates the simulation, using that target that is on the right-hand side here, we might try and use the mouse there, on that side, it will just 
in turn replace each one of those soils over the target. So it will use 150 mil, then it'll use 190 mil, then it'll use 240 mil, then 290. A, it's a list box there, you can have as many targets as you'd like. Uh, so that's actually just in there to give you a, a larger look at it, but that uh, last screen was pretty good. We can also do a, a part of the soil, which is the initial water. And you've just got to be a bit careful with this. When you do a replacement, it overwrites it completely. So when it would replace the soil during its process, and then you replace the initial water. The initial water is below the soil, so you've just got to watch your ordering. Um, basically there, just test it. You, you've really got to test that functionality. It's not um, working 100%. Uh, yeah, but you can, you can do it. Uh, that one's been tested, and as long as in the tree on the right, as long as it was underneath, it worked fine. We can also use initial nitrogen, though I tested it and it had a bit of a bug in it, so. Some of these things aren't 100% at the moment. Moving on to manager components, we've seen a lot about them uh, from Val and from Justin. Uh, it, can ha it, you, it handles manager components slightly different with the soil and the met. It, did a it just copied the entire component across. With the manager, what we did there was dragged one of the managers across the sorghum sowing rule onto a new factor node at the bottom there. When it, it automatically reads the properties, so the variables in the properties tab from the manager. So it's picked them up automatically. So that's the list that it's, it's read out from that manager node. What we can do then is use the checkbox to say we want to use that variable and we can use a comma separated list to add the different uh, level of parameters that we want to use. So similar to we had four soils underneath before, if you look there at the sowing date, we've set up there's actually five, five sowing dates across there. So, and that was just to show it actually worked. So it set that one up and it did this 300,000 simulations set up in that tree there. rush through that pretty well. <laughs> I'll just move on to advanced factorial. So most of you all know that the soils are not the same across all sites. So we had 47 sites, but there aren't going to be four soils that we use in each. So I've just set up an example there that's a bit smaller. We've just got five sites and four soils, and I've just set up a sowing rule there that had 100 different sowing options in it. So we just use those check boxes again and did a five by four by four. So we had a 2,000 runs in, the, in a nice simple sim simulation. The advanced factorial functionality lets you add folders and subfolders, which will change the way the fa factorials are calculated. So I probably didn't highlight that enough before, but what it did before was each factor node really multiplied with the next one. So if you had uh, 47 options and then four soil, 47 sites and four soils, It'd multiply the four by 47. And then it'd multiply it by the number of sowing options you had. When you add the folders in, it works slightly differently. The first thing it does is it grabs the lowest folder nodes on the tree. So in this case, that would be the, the WA folder, the SA folder, and the ALL folder. That was the wrong button. Each identified folder is then treated as a single set of factorials. So then they're added together and not multiplied. So it's, 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 a bit, it's a difficult concept. What we'll do is try and show that through calculating the number of uh, simulations each folder will create. So if we look at the WA folder there, we've set up a single site with a single soil, it then, which means that this is now overridden the factor nodes from the root folder. So what it does is it goes to the end, it goes to WA, it finds all the factor nodes within that one, and then it works back up the tree in a hierarchy. 
So it goes back up to, to the region, it doesn't find any other factors there, so it keeps moving up to the factorials node, the root node. It found a site node, but it doesn't use it because it's already got one. It found the soil node, it doesn't use it because it's already got one. Then it finds the sowing node, which it uses. Sowing has 100, simula uh, 100 different options in it, so it multiplies that and we have a result in 100 simulations. The, South, the SA folder, we've added an extra soil there. So we've got two soils multiplied by the one site, and then we multiply that by the 100 sowing options. So we get 200 simulations. So what we're trying to show here is that instead of doing four soils by all five sites, what we're doing is doing one soil by one site, two soils by the next site, and then the last site is all and it's doing three sites. But the difference between the last site is that it doesn't have a soil node, so it uses the soil node that it found in the root node, so it's using all four. So it does all three, three sites by the four soils by the 100 sowing options, which gives us 1,200 simulations. So it's an oversimplification of what, what the problem we're trying to solve there was the 47 sites, there's a different soil for each site. That's how we'd set it up, but it's, a, it's obviously a lot more advanced than that. What we saved then was, though, was 800 simulations in a very simple demonstration. At the end of that, you can click on your factorials node and it shows there that we've now got 1,500 simulations. That tree there on the right that's underneath the continuous sorghum, 1,500, that's what, we use to sh that's what you use to test whether or not you've got your targets right, whether you've got your manager options right. It lists them out there to say what variables are used and what their property is. So date equals the 15th of December. Density equals 10, file name is Esperance. So that's the, the way you can check to see if you've got it right. That list can get pretty large. So in summary, we just had a quick look at how, in what situations we should use Factorial. Uh, we had a quick look at how you might get started. A quick uh, example of MET components, soil components, and the manager components and a dip their toe in the water at the uh, advanced functionality.